Hey everybody, Alonzo here with Gulf Coast Smoke. Today, we're cooking spare ribs out on my Traeger Ironwood 650. So today, the reason I wanted to do this video was to talk about a few things while we're cooking these ribs. Number one, I wanted to let you guys know how I like to cook spare ribs. Um, you know, everybody has different ways that they like to cook these. Some people like fall off the bone. Some people like a little more bite to it, which that's me. I like a little more bite when I'm eating ribs. I don't like them to be too mushy or anything like that, but hey, sometimes it's nice to switch it up and do that three, two, one method. Today, we're not gonna do three, two, one. I'm gonna get these ribs done in about three and a half hours, and I'm gonna show you how I do it. The second thing I wanna talk about is our rub, Gulf Coast Smoke Southern Hospitality. So the reason I wanted to talk about this was because I have people all the time that ask me, message me and say, hey, what's Southern Hospitality good on? Is it good for beef, chicken, pork, fish? What's it good on? And my answer is it's made and it was designed for poultry, for fish, and for pork. Sorry, I lost my train of thought for a second. So it was made for those things. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't put it on beef. Obviously, if you ever decide to pick up a bottle, we're grateful, and you can put it on whatever you want. I've had people send me pictures of them cooking briskets with it. They say it tastes great. Steaks, same thing. But just know that we designed it for pork fish, and chicken. Now, when I think of a standard barbecue rub, I think of great red color, sweet, tiny bit of smokiness, and a lot of other savory notes in there as well. And that's what we did here. So if when you think of your beef, you don't want sweet, I'm not gonna lie to you, Southern Hospitality is not the one to go with. We have something coming out for beef very, very soon. And when I say very, very soon, I mean hopefully within the next couple of weeks, it's gonna be perfect for beef. So just hold on until that one. But for now, we're gonna cook the pork ribs with this today and I'm gonna show you how it has that great color. We're gonna talk about the flavors and then hopefully if you guys were ever interested in the future, you could pick one up for yourself and try it out. But I want you guys to come on in now. We're gonna look at these spare ribs and I'm gonna show you guys what I'm looking for when I do this trim and things that I think are important. And again, everybody has different methods of cooking. I don't think our way is the best way, it's just our way. So take from this what you will, hopefully you guys learn a little bit, and I know that if you use this method, you're going to have some great ribs, so come on in, let's talk about it. Okay, so today we're staring at some spare ribs that I picked up from my local grocery market, and the difference between spare and baby back is that spares, bones here, pretty straight, baby backs, they're more curved. Personally, um, I like the spares better because I feel like you get more meat out of it, but you know, potato, potato really just depends on what you like. Now, when I'm looking for a set of spare ribs, I first look at the bones and I see how straight they are in comparison to the rack here. So you can see right here, the bones are pretty straight. And then over here, they kind of start angling off a little bit. That's okay. If you're shopping at a grocery store in your area and not like a specialty butcher, uh, it's going to be a little bit harder to get them straight all the way through. And again, like I said, that's completely okay. These are still going to turn out really good. So on the front here, one of the other things that I noticed right off the bat is that it starts a little slimmer over here. And as we go along the rack, it widens a little bit. So right here, you can kind of feel bone all the way through. And over here, you start feeling less and less bone. The bones actually get really, really short over here. And so one of the things I personally like to do, and again, this is personal. You don't have to necessarily do this. Do it how you want. This is just a different way to look at things. So I can feel this bone right here. You see how short it is right there? I'm literally holding it between my fingers. And this next one isn't much bigger. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to find a seam and I'm going to cut that off and you know you can see how short these bones are here on the end I'm literally folding the meat over the bones and again that's all right but I'm really kind of looking for a nice looking rib uh, you know obviously you guys are watching this on YouTube um, I'm into social media all the way through so I like to try and get a nice rack of ribs here so you see how that already looks more uniform? It looks better. Now, this meat right here up here, I'll also take it. 
Sorry about the fly. They're insane over here in Texas. Uh, I'll take it and I'll just cut off the top right here. You see, that's not much meat. We can still smoke that. You can still put that in beans. But now, look at how much better that rack already looks with two simple cuts. And this right here is always going to present beautifully. So right here, the next thing I see is we have some fat that separates this meat here. And I like to also take this out. Yeah, so I'm not gonna lie. I don't take this out every single time, but when I notice that this makes the rest of the meat so uneven, um, because it's a bigger piece, I will take it off. And then of course, just some clean up here and there will make it look really good. You know, obviously got a little bit of silver skin in here. You want to try and take as little meat as possible, but you know, I've told you before, say it again, we're not perfect. It's okay if it doesn't look competition ready. What we're trying to do here is we're trying to cook good food for our family and for our friends, and they are going to love this for sure. So what you can do, because this fat right here, most of the time does go pretty far down, is you can find the bone over here, you can cut this rib and the end off as well. And so that is still going to give you approximately 12 or 13 bones here, and you're still going to have a nice rack. So I'm really happy with the way this looks already, and I'm really not going to do too much more trimming on top. So now let's look on the back side, see if there's anything we need to take care of. Okay, so you see this flap here. I personally will always take that off. And again, the reason I take that off is literally because I want these to cook as evenly as possible. So I just try and get as close to the bones as I can. So I just pull it and I let the knife do the work. It's pretty simple there. Boom. So again, as we're doing work on these racks, you can see that the shape gets better and better pretty much with everything we do, and that's exactly what we're going for. So, one more time. This stuff right here is still edible. What we'll do a lot is we'll smoke it, and we'll throw it in beans, or we'll mix it in some other stuff that we're making, so don't throw that away. So what I do last is I pull the membrane, and I do this every single time. There's not a rack of ribs that I won't pull the membrane off, you know. So all you need to do is get a butter knife, Get under that membrane, you can literally see it. And then what I like to do is take a paper towel, grab it, pull it, go to town. So there the membrane's gone. You can see that now we're closer to the meat. This membrane isn't going to act as something that's gonna stop the rub from penetrating the meat on the back. And honestly, for me, I'm okay with the rest. Like I said before, we're not at a competition. We're just trying to cook good food for our family and friends. So now let's go ahead and let's get to seasoning. Okay, so now it's time to put the rub on these ribs. What we're going to do today is we're going to use a binder. We're using yellow mustard, and really it's up to you if you want to use a binder at all. I mean, I've seen people use Worcestershire sauce, olive oil, whatever. It really is up to you. I just like that it helps the rub adhere to the meat a little bit better, and that's just my personal preference to use the mustard. So... From here, what we'll do is we'll put the rub on the ribs and we're going to do it on the bottom side first. The reason we do it on the bottom side first is because the top is our presentation side and we don't want that part to be rubbing all over the cutting board and messing up the rub that's on top because again, that's where the presentation comes from. And like I said earlier, you want to present some nice ribs to your family and your friends. Now from here, all we're going to do is go outside. I have my Traeger Ironwood 650 running at 275. And we will check these in 45 minutes. We'll check them to see if we need to spritz them at all. And if we do need to spritz, I'll tell you why. And I'll show you what we're using if we decide to do that. And then from there, what we want is two hours in the smoke. And then we're going to wrap these in foil. We're not going to put anything in the wrap today. We're focusing on that Southern hospitality. And I'm telling you, you don't need anything else with this. It's a great rub. There's some unique flavors in there. It's got the perfect amount of sweet smokiness. So Let's go ahead and get to it. I'm not gonna talk anymore. We're gonna get some B-roll. I'm gonna take this outside. Then we'll be back in 45 minutes after these ribs have been on the trigger.
Okay, so now we're outside, we're at the Traeger, and we're just gonna put these on. I know I said I was gonna cut to B-roll, but I did wanna talk about one more thing. So let's go ahead and put these on and I'll let you know what I'm talking about. So the way that you put these on the Traeger is the way that they're gonna cook. So you wanna make sure everything is nice, uniform, um, make sure the bones are as straight as possible because the way you put it on here is the way it's gonna cook. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and see you back in 45 minutes, take a look at that beautiful color that Southern Hospitality gives off. We're going to make sure we retain this color all the way through the cook, and I'll show you exactly how we're going to do that. Okay, so it's been 45 minutes, and it's time to check on these ribs. And I've got some spritz with me, and this is 50-50 apple cider vinegar and water. I don't go too crazy with my spritz, and we're going to see if this needs to be spritzed. Now, I haven't looked at these ribs. I'm going to look at them with you, so let's see what we're working with and decide if we need to or not. Okay, yeah, you see nice color here. And you can see that even after just 45 minutes, I'm not getting too much of the rub coming off. Now, sometimes you get these little black spots like that and that comes from the bones. Um, you know, if you wanted to, you could actually spritz it, hit it with a paper towel and then reapply rub on it to kind of help it go away. I'm not too worried about it. Like I said, we're not cooking for a competition today. This is just for family and friends, so no big deal to me. Now, because we want to retain this beautiful color here that you see everywhere, I am going to spritz it, and I'm going to hit it pretty lightly all the way over. And that looks great to me. And so one of the reasons why I decided to spritz, even though the color is looking great and it's not too dried out, is because sugar, as it cooks longer, as it smokes longer, it's going to get darker and darker. I want to retain that nice red color there. So brown sugar is the first ingredient in Southern Hospitality because it is a brown sugar based rub and we want to make sure that it doesn't get too dark. Now from experience, this is my main rub. It doesn't get too dark at any point. but. Like I told you guys in the beginning of this video, I'm just showing you the little tips and tricks I use in order to make sure that I always have a good product on ribs. So I've told you guys before, we're not competition cookers, but I do feel like ribs and steaks are our strongest cooks. So these are the things I do in order to always get a good product on the ribs. You know, most of the time I get pretty consistent results. So if you follow these tips, you will too. But uh, anyway, let's wait 45 more minutes. That puts us at an hour and a half. We'll see if we want to spritz again and then 30 minutes after that we're going to wrap these in foil okay so it's been an hour on the ribs now we were shooting for 45 minutes but we got wrapped up doing a few other things but i'm still confident that the color is going to be great on it because of that last spritz that we did so let's go ahead and look at them together and it's going to be time to wrap these like i said i always shoot for two hours no matter what i have confidence that this is going to be good you know obviously if you don't have a traeger you can do this on a weber kettle Weber Smoky Mountain, which I've done it before. You can look back on a couple of videos on the channel if you're interested. But anyway, let's go ahead and look at this. It's time to take them out and I'll show you what we're looking for here and what we're gonna do with that wrap. Yeah, so you could see here, that bark is set on those ribs. Nothing's coming off when I touch here. Nothing is coming off. So the smoke is going really well. It's rendering the fat here. You can see that the fat is rendering within these ribs. So now what I want to do is I just want to get these inside and I want to wrap them in foil. So we're going to use a heavy duty foil. We're going to wrap with one layer. We're not going to use two because we're not applying any moisture inside the wrap today. I will hit it on top with spritz and I will layer a little bit of the rub within the foil as well but we're not gonna go into too much detail on that. I'll show you guys, I'll wrap them, we'll bring it back out. Okay, and once we come back out with the wrapped ribs, what we're gonna do is we're gonna place it meat side down. And the reason that people normally do that is because they have some sort of liquid in there that they want the meat to sit in and kind of get all those juices inside. Uh, today, what we're gonna do it for and why I always do it is because I like to check the backside of the ribs in order to get an idea of how done they are. So we'll talk about pullback We'll talk about disintegration on the back as well. Those are two indicators that this is getting close to being a done cook. You can also take a thermopin and check the internal temps on the ribs. I'm shooting for about 210 degrees. 
you know sometimes people like to use a thermo pin sometimes they don't and there's a lot of ways that you can see if these ribs are done without a thermo pin but i like to check it with both as well just to always make sure so let's go ahead and get these off we're gonna put the rub down we're gonna spritz them a little bit and then we're gonna let these cook for another hour before we look at them and then we'll see if they're done uh, we don't want to rush that process i told you guys earlier i think it's going to take about three three and a half hours so let's see if we get it done within that time i don't think the ribs need to take six hours in order to be delicious uh, again this is the way i like to do them this is the way we like to eat them at our house but let's go ahead and take these off get it going and then we're going to be back out and keep cooking Okay, so it's been another hour. Let's go ahead and take a look at these ribs now. I want to talk to you about the pullback and the disintegration that I was talking about earlier so you guys can see what you're looking for when it comes to cooking these ribs and making sure they look right and they taste good. So let's go ahead and take a look together. Okay, so first thing, disintegration, right? So you can see the bone here now, and that means that the membrane back here, or what was the membrane, that skin that's on top of the bones now, it's literally disintegrating. And you can kind of wiggle it a little bit, and that's good. It's not too, too tender where it yanks out, which is where I want it. So what I want to do now, check the internal temps. And you remember earlier I said I was looking for about 210. So this is a 208 and that's perfect for me. And so with the pullback on these bones, what I'm talking about is the meat is literally pulling away from the edge of the bones. So you're seeing how this right here is actually a little more exposed. Um, and it didn't happen too, too much over here, but that's okay. These ribs are done, they're where I want them. So let's take them inside, flip them over, take a look at the top, and then we're gonna try these. Okay, so overall the ribs took about three hours to cook give or take a few minutes to bring it in, wrap them up and do the spritzing and stuff like that. So around three hours, three and a half hours, it's a pretty simple cook. Um, and again, this is the way I like to do them. I don't think ribs take six hours and I like cooking them at a higher temperature at that 275. I think it helps break down the fat within the ribs really, really well. So yeah, that's the way we did them today. Now I just want you guys to come on in. What we're gonna do is we're gonna slice these up I'm gonna show you what they look like on the inside, and then we'll take a bite. We'll see if we can get a nice bite mark there. We'll see if we can take the meat off the bone with no issues. So come on in, let's get right to it. Yeah, so look at the color on these ribs. Turned out amazing and definitely one of the focal points of Southern Hospitality when we made it. Um, you know, that nice red color is what you wanna see when you're making spare ribs, barbecue chicken, everything. So that's why we concentrated really hard on that. Now. What I'm gonna do to slice these, and I like to do this, I'm gonna flip these over. We're just gonna get right to it. So, slicing really well. And the reason I like to turn it over is because I can see these bones now, and I can make sure that these cuts are really nice. And you know, a lot of the times, I'm not gonna lie, whenever I do ribs and I don't flip this over, I unfortunately will make a few mistakes and uh, you know on top I'll have to cut twice or something like that and you definitely don't want to do that again just for presentation. Alright so let's take a look at one of these together. And yeah that definitely looks juicy, moist. You know the one thing I noticed is obviously it doesn't have the biggest smoke ring ever but 
you know, we used my Traeger today and we used a higher temp, so that doesn't really surprise me at all, to be 100% honest. But again, look at the color on that rib. It was cooked really well. Now, let's go ahead and take a bite, talk about how it tastes. Okay, best time of the day. Time to try this. I'm going to let you guys know how it tastes. So I'm just going to go back in, take that same rib I showed you a second ago. Perfect bite through. You can see my teeth marks right there. Um, I mean, juicy, obviously very good. Let's see if the bone comes out clean. Yeah, and so the bone comes out clean as well. Sorry, I had to cut that a little bit. It was really hot and it burned my fingers, so I dropped it for a second. But yeah, I mean, you can see super clean bone. You know, I did not have to try hard at all to get that off. Just a really good rub all together. I mean, and so I really say this and I mean it. We tried to put a good product out. We put a lot of work into it. And, you know, this is just what we do. We really enjoy this rub. I think it's unique. I think you'd like it. So if you're interested, I'll leave a link below. And you guys are more than welcome to pick it up. I'll shoot you guys a free koozie and sticker if you do decide to give us a try. Um, you know, back to the ribs though, back to the cook. I mean, simple, simple, simple. That's the word that we want to use today. It doesn't take too much. You don't want to overthink it. It's not very hard to cook good ribs. These took me three, three and a half hours and they turned out amazing. Delicious, juicy, perfect. No one's going to complain about these ribs. I can just about guarantee you that. So, Go out, use whatever cooker you have. Heck, if you only have an oven, try it in the oven as well. Just cook. That's what we want you guys to see. That's what we want you guys to realize. Just cook. Just try your best. Just have fun. And hopefully you don't have kids in the background making noise while you're making videos. But uh, no, I'm just kidding. It's all good. Anyway, thank you again for watching. Uh, you know, like I said, this video was a little bit different. Not too, too much B-roll. Not too, too much family action. But I wanted to concentrate and let you guys know how to make these ribs and what you can do to make them good every single time. As always, I really appreciate you guys tuning into this video. Thanks. We'll see you on the next one.